we come to today's uh, service. Today is uh, what is today's date? Today is the 15th, 16th day of February, which year? January. Of January, okay. Which year is that? 2022. We want to go deeper and uh, into our teaching about sanctification. And uh, you know, that teaching is uh, because we have an expectation. We are teaching sanctification because we have what? We have expectation. And our expectation is that the, the ark of the Lord should what? Should what? Should return to Nigeria. And thank God for the prophecy last week, Sunday, during the, the Zoom meeting at night, that the ark is already on, 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 on his way to Nigeria. The ark is already on the way coming to Nigeria. So, and in that expectation of the return of the ark to Nigeria, and that is why the teaching on sanctification has been going on. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's so very important that uh, we, the church return back to sanctification. And today, I will wrap up the teaching about the five ways to be sanctified. You know, how do I get sanctified? There are five keys, key ways to what? To be sanctified. To be sanctified. Well, I've mentioned them, but I'm going to wrap them up today. But uh, before we continue today, I really want us to, to beware of the doctrines of devils. What should we be aware of? We should be aware of what? The doctrines of devils. Some version call it doctrines of demons. But first and foremost, let's start our reading of Bible this morning by, this is uh, the Rapture Church. And we are speaking right here from the altar of the National Restoration Program. So let's see something this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. And then we go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. We are actually looking at what? The five amen, ways to, to be sanctified and to maintain your sanctification. Because if you are sanctified, you must also maintain your word, your sanctification, because there are defilements. There are pollution. Let's see the first one, the first reading. Second Corinthians 7, verse 1. Because we have these promises. Because we have these promises. Dear friends. Dear friends. Let us cleanse ourselves. Let us cleanse ourselves. From everything that can defy our body or spirit. So there are some things that can what? Defy that can our defile bodies. our body and spirit. Paul said, therefore, having this word, this word, what is it we have? This word. We have these promises. These promises. There are so many promises about the nation Nigeria. When you read our book, The Coming uh, 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 Prophetic Colors of Islam, in that one of the chapters was dedicated to what? To the prophetic destiny of Nigeria. There you see various amazing promises that God has made over this nation. About the redemption of Nigeria. About the revival of Nigeria. About the glory of our nation, Nigeria. So many fathers have spoken. And God is still speaking over Nigeria. So having this word, these promises, is being prophesied. That the revival that will prepare the global church for the rapture is what is going to happen here. It's going to begin from Nigeria. By Ethan prophesied it. That Nigeria is a trigger for the last revival. Amen. We have these promises. Brethren were praying in South Africa some years ago. Why they got praying and the Lord began, began to speak to them. 
and to them, don't pray for the revival of South Africa. Pray for the revival of what? Of Nigeria. For out of the deposit of Nigeria, I will give you. Out of what I deposit Nigeria, that is out of that one that I will give you. So there are so many promises. God has spoken. And he's still speaking. Amen. And the Bible says, have been this word. Let me see another version. Have been these promises. Have, another version. Okay. Uh -huh. Since we have these promises, mm -hmm. dear friends, mm -hmm. let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Let us purify ourselves. Let us what? Let us sanctify ourselves. And let me see. Any other version different from that one? Let us purify ourselves. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Let us cleanse ourselves. Let, Let us do what? Cleanse ourselves. Let us cleanse ourselves. From all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. From all filthiness. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in which fear? In the fear of the Lord. And what did you say is sanctification? Sanctification is what? Is what? What do you say sanctification? To make holy. To make pure, to cleanse, to remove filthiness, to remove contamination, to make what pure and what and holy. That is sanctification. And as a matter of fact, people confuse sanctification and, cons and, uh, and consecration. They are not the same. To consecrate means to set apart. To sanctify means to make holy. What do I say? Sanctification is not the same thing as consecration. Though some version of the Bible use them intermittently, but they are not the same. They are two different things. To sanctify means to what? It means to what? To make holy and pure. To consecrate means to set apart for a special use. And you know, sanctification is one of the seven, eight process of consecration. There are eight stages of consecration. One of the stages is what? Is the stage of sanctification. Have been these promises. Let us what? Let us do what? Let us cleanse ourselves. Let us purify ourselves. Let us wash ourselves. Perfecting what? Holiness in what? In the fear of the Lord. You, you only said it about that second part of it. No, it says something. Uh, what did he say about it? And let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. Let us work towards what? Complete holiness. Brethren, let us do what? It is time for us to walk towards what? Complete holiness. Because we fear the Lord. What are the other version? What did he say? Let us walk out. Let us walk. Perfecting holiness out of God. Perfecting holiness out of what? So holiness must be perfected. That is what King James says. Let us walk towards complete. NLT says, let us walk towards what? Complete. We should walk towards it. That is what we are saying. Amen. Let us walk. Let us walk to us. Let us walk towards what? Let us walk towards complete holiness. And Kijem say, perfect in holiness. So if we want these promises, amen, that abounds. The promise I've told you that there are four, pro, uh, pro, uh, four purposes of God for Nigeria. We said the first one is what? Is a removal of the Northern Army from Nigeria. The second is what? The second is what? Is the revival of Nigeria. And the third is what? The third is the restoration of Nigeria. And the fourth is what? Is the collapse of Islam in Nigeria. So if we want to see these promises come to pass, brethren, it is time for us to walk towards. What is it we should do? It is time for us to walk. To walk. To walk. To walk towards what? Complete holiness. Amen. It is time for us to what? To step up. Amen. It is time for us to what? To cleanse ourselves. To purify ourselves. 
to walk towards what? Complete holiness. And that is what the message I'll be talking about is all about. And that is we bought that is what the book, the 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 the, the, the seven prophetic steps to back the new Nigeria is all about. Walking towards what? Towards complete what holiness. Walking towards complete holiness. Amen. That is the burden of it all. That is the heart of the message. And this is what every church should focus on this new this year, 2022. Amen. Our focus should be walking towards what? Complete holiness. Amen. Perfecting holiness. We're in the fear of the Lord. Because the Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see what? No man shall see the word, the Lord. Amen. David tried to reform the ark of the Lord to its to what to Zion to bring the ark of God back to Israel, back to, to his place. He tried to bring back the ark from exile. Just like some of us, we are, we are, we are trying to bring back the the, 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 the latter the latter glory of Nigeria. We are trying to bring Nigeria to a place where we witness more than what happened in the time of Ayo Balala. We are trying to rev- we are trying to bring back the glory of God. We are we are we are trying to bring revival back to Nigeria. Because what is happening in our nation today in the church is far from revival. We have read of revival, and we know what revival is. The, st- the Nigeria church is actually the state of apostasy. So how do we bring back? How do we? Because there are promises of of the, of the latter glory of Nigeria. By it in say a new face shall emerge. So how do we? How do we get these promises to come to pass? Then what must we do? We must walk towards what? Towards what? Complete holiness. But in our bid, in our quest for what? For sanctification. Which is what brings men to what? To walk in the complete holiness. Who says sanctification is what? The Bible says for the will of God is that you should what? That you should be sanctified. That you should possess your vessel in what? In sanctification and in honor. Leviticus chapter 11, 44. 11, it says, sanctify yourself therefore and be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Do what? Be what? Holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So, we have a lot of things that we must be careful of. And one of the things we must be careful of is that we must be aware of what? Of doctrines of what? Of devils. Let's see where I told you to read the second scripture. First Timothy chapter 4, 1 and 2. I want to see from various passions. We must be aware of what? Of doctrine of devils. And I will tell you what doctrine of devil is before we now begin to, before we go to the five ways to get sanctified and maintain sanctification. First Timothy 4. Hold on. He said what? Now the Spirit expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They do what? What do they do? They They speak speak lies in what? In hypocrisy. They are hypocrites. They are, what they speak is lies. Having their heart done what? Their heart is what happened to them? With hot iron. They give heed to what? Seducing spirit. They are what? What doctrines are they preaching? Doctrines of death. Amen. Let me see my other version. The spirit clearly says Mm -hmm. that in latter times, some will abandon they will abandon the they, a lot of people you see them preaching they've abandoned the faith that was once and forever delivered to us they've abandoned this faith the faith they are preaching is another faith it's not the faith, the apostolic faith no, they've abandoned the faith uh-huh. and follow the same spirit they have what, a lot of people have there are spirits that have called them what deceiving the spirit they have followed the deceiving so many people you see today, they are following what? Deceiving spirit. And how do you know them? 
Amen. Any preacher of the gospel, amen, who preaches prosperity and grace without sanctification is following what? Is following deceiving spirits, seducing spirits. What do I say? What do I say? Any preacher of the gospel that preaches prosperity, amen, that preaches eternal security, preaches grace without sanctification is what? Is what? It is, is, is following what? Deceiving. You can know them. Bible says, for by their fruit we shall what? We shall know them. Check your pastor. Check that pastor very well. His preaching of prosperity. His preaching about grace. Does it encompass in its totality the doctrine of sanctification? If the answer is no, who is he? You are following a man who is following what? Seducing, deceiving spirit. And what did they say after that? Eh? After deceiving spirit? And things taught by demons. And things that are taught by what? Demons. A lot of pastors, their teacher is who? Demons. Demons are the ones that teach them. Those things they call revelation. Who, who revealed to them? Demons. Demons. Any revelation of breakthrough, prosperity, success, grace, eh? and eternal security, and whatever you call them, that does not carry along, along, side by side. Amen. That does not what? That does not carry side by side. Sanctification is what? They are things received. Who, who were they received them from? From demons. From demons. They come through hypocritical liars. Whose conscience have been seared as with a hot These fire. These guys don't have conscience again. Ah! They receive it from demons and they release to you. And you are jumping. My papa said. My mama said. They call one now Mama Jiu. Amen. All manner of people who are who are, who are who have received doctrines from devils. They don't talk about sanctification. They preach grace without sanctification. They are ignorant persons. They don't know the grace of God that brings salvation, teach men to renounce ungodliness and worldly pleasure and live soberly, righteously in this present world. They don't know and godly in this present world. They don't know that the grace of God make men to what to focus to expect the coming of Jesus. Titus uh, 2. From verse 11 to 14. Beware, brethren of what? Of what? Of doctrines of what? Doctrines of devils. People, you must understand that people receive teaching from where? From devils. From demons. Demons inspire them. Demon is inspired. Don't be ignorant. Beware. Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 15. Can I see from Christian Passion? I'm still, I'm still coming to your own. Let me see Matthew 7 from Psalm 7 15 from Christian Passion. Jesus warned us in Matthew 24 also. 24. He warned us. He warned us. Uh -huh. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. They come to you in the clothing of sheep. Uh -huh. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. They are ravenous wolves. And that is why verse 21 now says, He said, On that day, many will come to me. Eh? He said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, I went to the kingdom of my father, who is in heaven. When you read Matthew, you go to verse 21 to 23. Because by the activities of these people, this word, these wolves in sheep clothing, amen, many people will miss heaven. Many people will become what? Workers of iniquity. Just like themselves. Be aware of them. In your church, check your church very well. When last did your pastors teach sanctification? Insist on holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. God cannot give you breakthrough until, until, until you have holiness. The breakthrough that comes from Jesus is what? Is, is what? Is attached to what? To holiness. Because holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 
And that is why the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, he said, seek ye first the what? The kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added. When you have every other thing without righteousness, who gives you that thing? It is the devil that gives you that thing. In Matthew chapter 4, the devil came to Jesus and told him, say, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you the glory and the riches of this world. Many pastors have bowed down to the devil. And they'll be giving the glory and the riches of this world. You don't know. They have bowed down to the devil. He has given them the glory. He has given the riches of this world. And you are saying, hey, you are running after them. They should anoint you. Anoint you. Anoint you. Let's run after sanctification. The other day, this a man of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are a generation that did what? We ran after what? Anointing without what? Without sanctification. I know what we end up getting. Demon end up what? He said the what? He said the doctrine of what? Where did they receive from? Let's go. Let me see from your own version. Now, they, 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 now start from this one of that of that of that place. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that. The, who is the one telling us clearly? The Holy, the Holy Ghost tells us how? Clearly. clearly. That's in the last times. It, it is a clear thing the Holy Ghost have told us. He tells us clearly that where are we now? We time. are in the last time. Some will turn away from the truth. Some would, a lot of people have turned from where? Turn, turn away from what? True faith. Some have turned away from the true faith. It's, they have turned away from where? The true faith. Some have turned away, brethren. And you can know them. The same Matthew chapter 7, when you read from verse 16 to 18, he say, and by their fruit you shall know them. You shall know them. By their fruits you shall know them. So many. Or let me use the word some. As the Bible uses it, have what? Have turned away. NLT. New literature says some. We turn away. The Holy Ghost speaks. It is clear. Except we want to deceive ourselves. The Holy Ghost is still speaking. And he's speaking through us. Though we are, we, are, we are not your major pastors, we are not your mega church pastors, but yet the Holy Ghost have chosen us to still remind you of these things. They are documented in the Bible. But it's like we are not seeing these things again. It is clear that some will, some will depart from what? Read for that, let me see, read for that. Some will depart from where? From the faith. Giving it to what? They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings. They will follow deceptive... They will follow what? Deceptive spirits and teachings. They will follow what? Deceptive, Deceptive spirits. Spirit. What are they following? Deceptive spirits. Spirit. So there are spirits that are called what? Deceptive, Deceptive spirits. And what? And teachings. Uh-huh. And what? Teachings that come from demons. And teachings that come from where? Demons. And I said any teaching, any preaching that emphasizes prosperity, Breakthrough, uh, what? Grace, eternal security, uh, without sanctification. Where does it come from? It is from the devil. Because the only thing the devil does not want is what? Is holiness. He doesn't want holiness. Because he knows that the Lord say, He said, Be you holy, for I, the Lord your God, am one. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. He said, be holy for I, the Lord your God, I am what? I am holy. The devil knows that if you are not living a holy life, you cannot go to heaven. He can give you money. He can give you breakthrough. He can give you large congregation. He can give you husband. He can give you miracle car. He can give you everything, just like we have to. So we have been so demonized that you come to church, look at our prayer article. What are our prayer articles today? Check our prayer in church. Nigerian church is praying. Yes, what, are, what is our prayer point? What are our prayer articles? We go to church, fine. What are, go, go, go and gather the sermons in Nigerian church today. Today being Sunday, the 16th of, 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 uh, of January 2022. Go to the whole of Africa, gather the sermons preach in Africa. Go to Europe, gather the sermon preach in Europe. Go to, go to America, gather the sermon to Australia, to Asia. Gather the whole sermon. You will be shocked that it will be ratio 1 to 99. 
Only 1% of churches are ministered had to preach a message that had what? That had sanctification emphasized. The remaining 99% all over the world, they are what? They are messages of what? Of prosperity, breakthrough, deliverance, miracle, healing without what? Without sanctification. That's the problem. And that is why today churches are increasing. Some of us are increasing, but what? But sinners are increasing from church to where? To the society. Corruption is on the rise. More Christians are getting breakthrough, are getting money, but, but what? But more sinners are going to hell every day. Amen? Amen. We must beware of what? Of doctrines of... And that is why we were warned in the book of Revelation chapter 2 about what? Three personalities. Who are they? Balaam, Nicolaitans, and what? And Jezebes. You see, I have a few things against you. For you tolerated that woman that calls herself a prophetess. Go to what? Go to teach and to what? And to seduce my servant to what? To seduce immorality and to eating things sacrificed to idols. Say, I've given her a space to repent. He may say, but if you don't repent, I will cast her and touch children to what? To the bed of what? To the bed of tribulation, to the bed of afflictions. Amen. Imagine pastors in Nigeria now gathered as they're praying for Tunubu to become president 2023 election. Pastors already. Balaam's everywhere. The other day it was Abuja, they were praying for Buhari. Pastors, bishops. Uh, is it like something of them? Amen. And the enemy knows. Praise the Lord. They are what? Teachings gotten from where? From demons. Uh, read for that. I didn't finish. These people are hypocrites and liars. They are what? Hypocrites and liars. And their consciences are dead. Their consciences are already dead. Hypocrites and liars. You can know them. Check their sermons. Go and check their sermons. What is the emphasis? What I'm saying is that what? Some of them may do casual emphasis. They may just do casual references to holiness. Casual, authorized, casual. But check their messages. What is the emphasis? What is it that take time? What is it that they give attention to more? It will tell you where their messages are from. You know, they are very smart. Sometimes so that people say they don't preach, they will just make casual references to holiness. And they say, no, they are, even their pastors will preach holiness. Is that his emphasis? Amen. We must beware. This gospel has failed us. Nigeria has been on the decline from 1980 to date because of this world, of this world, of these doctrines of what? Of devils. The Holy Ghost was grieved and he left the church in Nigeria. And what is the evidence? Bandits. Abizanosu. Fulani herdsmen. Boko Haram. That is the evidence now that the Holy Ghost is not with us. Because if he's with us, we would have seen the hand of God against our enemy. We would have seen him thunder against them. Apostle Paul went to go and persecute the believers in, in Damascus because they were consecrated. They were what? They were sanctified and holy bread. What did God do? God had to encounter Apostle Paul to Damascus. Balaam went to go and curse Israel. Is that not so? So that the people of Moab can, can conquer them. Did they succeed? They couldn't succeed. Israel was victorious all along from Egypt until when they lost their, their sanctification. You remember that? When Achan went and brought their cost to the camp of Israel and the Lord got angry and abandoned them. What happened? They went to Ai and the people of Ai did what? Defeated the people of Israel. And Joshua, Joshua, Joshua from verse 13. Joshua, from a stand, Joshua lay down crying to God, Lord, why? Lord, why? Please, Lord, why? Lord, why are you crying to God? Get up! Verse 13, say, get up and sanctify them. Tell them, let them sanctify themselves for there is an accosting in their midst. Therefore, they cannot stand before their enemy. We cannot continue to keep accosting in our family, in our lives, in, our, in the church and in our community and in our society and expect God to do something. He will not do anything. Joshua learned it by bitter experience. Amen. So the bulk of the issue now is what? Is sanctification. Do we want victory? Amen. 
The only time Israel lost battle, they had just won the battle at, the, at, at Jericho. In what? In an out, outright, you know, you know, you know, you know, angelic victory. They didn't push the wall of Jericho. The wall of Jericho fell by itself. By obedience to God. Because when we obey God, God will obey us. But after the wall of Jericho, they were given instruction. Destroy everything. You see, waste everything, you see. It's all outright condemnation. Destroy everything. Ekan didn't follow instruction. He went and looked for some good things. And then carried and brought them. Disobedience to God. And God became angry. At that particular time, the people... Now, remember, only one man did sin, Ekan. And the whole nation paid for it. You may, you may be wondering, huh? But it's not everybody that is committing sin now. Of course, that is how it always be. Because we are the body of Christ. It is not every pastor that is doing this nonsense. But some are doing it. So, and God looks at us as his body. Amen. So, as, look at, look, look, look at. You know, you know, you know, it's so bad. That a pastor, one prominent pastor in Lagos here was preaching. Preaching uh, for, two, campaigning for Tunibu in his church. One prominent pastor. Campaigning for Tunibu in his church. Prominent pastor. So-called prominent pastor. Amen. It is not every pastor that is bad that is doing this thing. But the fact is that some are what? Some are in it. And by so doing, what have they done? They have polluted the world, the sanctuary of God. They have defied the, the church of God in Nigeria. And the can election is coming. And then a brother was raising a, a, was raising a, a serious uh, this thing. That can election is coming. Christians should rise and make a difference this coming can election. Because the leadership of Khan determine what happened to the church in Nigeria. Because they are leadership. Somebody called them, they, they are the keepers of the gates of Nigeria. That what happened in Khan matters to the church a great deal. Amen. So David tried to go and return the ark of the Lord to, you know, the ark of God. Just like many of us are trying to bring the ark of God back to Nigeria. We are fasting, we are praying, we are doing no manner of things, trying to return the ark. But I want to shock us and let us know that. The ark will not return to Nigeria until what? Until we return to sanctification. Amen. Until what? We return to sanctification. And that's what we saw in First Chronicles 15, verse 12 to 15, where David, David learned by bitter experience after the death of Uzzah in the first attempt. In the second attempt, he began to command the priests and the Levites that they should, they should sanctify themselves so that they can bring the ark of God, bring it to Jerusalem. And to Zion, where they feel that, where they, they, they wanted, wanted it to be. Amen. Amen. Because in the first instance, they went to bring the ark of God, but they were not what? They, they are saved, they were not prepared. They were not sanctified. David carried all sanctified men to go and bring the ark of God. It can't work. It can't work. God does not use men who are not sanctified. God only uses what? Sanctified vessels. And that is why you discover the Lord talking to Moses that he should sanctify Aaron and his children, that they can minister to him in the priestly office. Amen. That they can do what? Minister to him what? In the priestly office. Because God does not use unsanctified men for his own business, which is a kingdom business. Let's now narrow it down this morning to the five, the five things we need to, to be sanctified. Five ways to get sanctification. Amen? You can write this down. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Hebrews 13, 12. Hebrews 13, 12. It says, for it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayers. Okay, no, that is uh, 1 Timothy 4, 5. 1 Timothy 4, 5 makes us, make us to understand that sanctification comes by the word of God and by prayer. You want to be sanctified? then you need to return to what? The word of God. And you need to return to prayer. Peter said in, in Acts 6, he said, for we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. If you want to be sanctified, you must what? You must give attention. You must, you must, you must give attention to what? To the word of God and to prayer. The same First Timothy we read, when you go to verse 5 of First Timothy, you know, he began to tell us about how to be sanctified. Amen. Are you there? We have been reading 1 Timothy now, chapter 4. Go down to verse 5. 
verse 5, in view of what? In view of the activities of what? Of, of, of these people. Amen. Who are what? Who are, who, are, who are peddling the doctrines of devils. Paul now went further to now begin to tell us what to do to be sanctified. Are you there? Verse 5? First Timothy 4 5. 4 5. For we know it is made acceptable by the word of God and prayer. Made acceptable. Let me see from King James. Because it is consecrated by the word of God. Let me see from Old King James. Old King James says, For it is. It is sanctified by what? The word of God and what? And prayer. Yes. Amen. So if we want sanctification, we must what? We must return to the word of God. We must become, we must become Berean be, be, uh, Christians. Accept, they talk about the Berean Christians. We must not just study, we must search the Bible. Most of us don't study the Bible. We only, we only read the Bible. Read the Bible alone cannot give you sanctification. I'll be, I'll be telling you how to study Bible. You have not done that now. You read the Bible, but you are not studying Bible. You just carry my book. Even I'll be telling you. When you read the Bible, be, 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 be observant. Be meditative. Be mindful of what you are reading. When you read the Bible, be mindful of what you are doing. Read with, list, read with attention. And as you read, there are issues that you will, there are things that you will see that will strike you. There are, you should ask questions. Don't read the Bible like novel. Read the Bible asking questions. That is what takes you to the place of studies. People don't study the word of God cannot be sanctified. It is the study of the word of God. That's what the Bible says. Uh, uh, I think that is 1 Timothy 2.5. It's um, 15. It says study to show yourself approved. 1 Timothy 2.5. 15. 1 Timothy 2. I think 2.15. I think so. Is that so? Not Check. Is, or, or, is this First Timothy or Second Timothy two fifteen? I don't forgot. Either First Timothy two fifteen or Second Timothy two fifteen, where it says study to yourself approve a workman. I need to mention. Work so you can present yourself to God and receive His approval. Mm-hmm. Be a good worker. Mm-hmm. One who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Okay. Let's let me see another version. Do your Second Timothy two fifteen. Yes. Do mm-hmm. your best to present yourself to God mm-hmm. as one approved. A workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Who correctly does what? Handles the word of truth. Do your best. Can James put it better than all this fashion? Uh-huh. Study the, the work he's talking about here. He's studying. Are you seeing that? Your own says work. The work that your version talk about, this is a new living tradition, man. The work that the version is talking about here is actually what? Studying his work. It. You see me sitting down here for months time. You think I'm playing? I spend most of my time. You know what I'm doing inside the room every time? I am studying. You, when I ask Dorina, I say, I've already have read five chapters. Uh, before I know, I say, I've read ten chapters. You can read 30 chapters of the Bible in a day. But yeah, I do so study, more study now than reading. You, you better know how to speak read English so that you can start reading Bible. And you now will give the Bible, you will throw it away and be playing. Why are you collecting a Bible? Don't collect a Bible next time. Maybe. Let her be reading. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the work, the real work is what? Is the study. The greatest work of a child of God is what? Is studying the word of God. Because if you don't study the word of God, these guys with doctrine of devils will confuse you. Because the Bible says, who will have all men to what? To be saved and to come to the knowledge of what? The knowledge of the truth. It is by studying that you come to what? The knowledge of the truth. People are surprised. How did Moses God special know so much like this? Somebody who called me one day, you know, in Kaduna, after the book, the seven last one came, came out, and uh, the cooking uh, R.C. chairman that time, P.C. chairman, Reverend uh, Dakande is late now. You know, read that book. I went to cooking uh, in Aragogo in Kaduna, and they was asking me, which seminar did you have your PhD from? I laughed. I said, no, I didn't have PhD. I'm an engineer. I read engineering for investor of the Lord. As a matter of fact, I only went to Bible school for is it six months now? How many months? One, one, only one year. Bible, 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 this thing. And I stayed under, 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 under discipleship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul, Peter said, for we will give ourselves, Acts 6, to the ministry of what? The ministry of what? Of what? Of, of the world and of what? And of what? And of prayer. 
study to show yourself approved. You didn't finish from King James. A workman that need not to be ashamed, but what? <laughs> Read further for us. You didn't finish from King James. Second Timothy 2.15. A study to show thyself approved unto God, mm -hmm. a workman that needed not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rightly what? Rightly. rightly. So, 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 the things I know, you know, I was sharing with, uh, you know, when I, when, when I read, I, I recently came across the history of the revival from a, from a part of Guatemala. Amen. A Amolonga revival. You know, we're going to play that clip during the Feast of Rapture for brethren to watch. I'm no longer a revival. You know, some of, you know when, I, when, when I read that, yeah, I watched that clip, you know, I was comforted because some of the things that we are doing, that we think that we are just being zealous and doing something, we are actually fulfilling scriptures. We are actually fulfilling prophecies. Amen. Because prophecy must be fulfilled. And in a way, the Bible says, in Ezra chapter 1, and Second Chronicles chapter 34, I think 34, from if you read for I think from verse 6 down, he said, in order for the word of God through Jeremiah to be fulfilled. So is it wrong to watch satellite TV station to listen to music? No, it's not wrong. But I was one day I, in Canada, I remember another day in Canada, I just came from, from fellowship in the evening and I on TV. And I turned to one, one TV station. And the man who was preaching was telling the people that what eh, that, eh, that they don't mind them, those religious people. That once you are born again, sin cannot take you to hell. That you sin, the one you are committing, the one you've committed, the one you yet commit, Jesus has paid for it. Just go ahead. Keep, be free. Let your conscience not condemn you. Just come to church. Make sure you speak in tongues. I said, what kind of... And people were healing them out. Write down pastors. Write down pastors. Is that, is that? And, and young men are 24-7 hooked to these lies, this word, these deceivers, this Balaam, Jezebel, and the Colatans. And today, when you're talking about holiness, they, are, they look at you as if what is this we're talking about here? Worldliness have taken over the church. Carnality have taken over the church. Sin and iniquity have taken over the church. Manner of perversions have taken over the church. So today now, we have now what? Those apostolic doctrine have been neglected and been despised. The church that started a holiness church, they don't preach holiness again. They are preaching, come as you are. Come as you are, the doctrine of devils. Come as you are, doctors. No sanctification again. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord will help us. We cannot actually exhaust, exhaust this uh, teaching. I couldn't even go far today. But I think I have said one thing. We will continue next time on this same teaching, we will help God helping us. We'll wrap it up, uh, concluding on the five way to get sanctification. I think I've, been, I've actually emphasized one thing today. And what is that one thing? The word of God. The word of God. We need to study. I will talk more on prayer in the subsequent teaching. But I've said one thing. What do I say today? The word of God. The believer in Berica, they give their in Acts 17. After Paul had finished, they went back to search to know whether what Paul says is truth. They searched the scriptures. We need to search the scriptures. This is the time. Amen. He say, who will have all men to be saved and to what? And to come. That is uh, First Timothy what? No, it's not First Timothy 4. Where, where, where is that? First Timothy 2, 4. Is that not 2, 4? So we have all men to be saved and to what? And to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's 1 Timothy 2.4. 2.4. 4. 1 Timothy 2.4. Who wants all men to be saved? He wants all men to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. And he shall know the truth. And the truth shall, shall make you free. He said, you are made clean by the word that I speak to you. John 15, verse 2. You see, you are what? You have made clean the word that I speak to you. It is God's word that can sanctify us holy. So you have already been cleaned and purified by the message I've given you. By the message I've given you. You have been purified. Not, 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 this, not this another gospel today. Because, you know, you are not giving them the message. What I are giving to them today is what? 
another gospel. And Paul said, if I or an angel come and bring another gospel, let him go. Let him be accursed. This another gospel today we are preaching cannot sound, cannot, and that is why decadence, moral decadence is working strong and deeper in, in our society and from the beginning of the church. More immorality going on between from pastors to members. Amen. More immorality going on. The brother said he went, he went, he went to a church to go and a pastor uh, em, uh, actually employed him to become uh, to become to come and be pastoring alongside with him to help him in the church. And then when he began to come to church, God began to give him revelations. He will see this person and he will now say, God, the only thing will tell you that this person is into drugs. Talk to him. He will him. He will call the person. The person, the first one, they say no. One of them say no. That same day, he say no. It's okay. So he say no. Don't worry. That same day, they, they, they arrested the man and was taking him. So when they take him to, to jail, he was calling, they should come and call that brother, should come and pray for him. He say, he went to another, another person again. He saw another person again as he was trying to pray for the person. The Holy Ghost told him, this person is no drug. He's, drug. he's a drug pusher. One day him and the senior pastor went to a place and then as they were there trying to pray for the person, the Lord Holy Ghost telling him, this person is a drug pusher. And he began to rebuke the person that you are into drug pushing. If one God to answer you, to intervene, leave drug. And when they left and went back, the pastor was now began to warn him that he will kill him because he's trying to, he's trying to scatter his members for him. And the pastor began to threaten his life, and then he had to escape from that place and run away. He's a pastor. He has a big church. He has, he has a big church. He preaches. Praise the Lord. He's a pastor. A manner of evil things happen. The time to clean up the church is now. We can't continue like this and expect God to do anything, to do something for us. We, we, can't, we can't deceive God. We can only deceive ourselves. It's whatever a man or a people sow. That is what they read. Galatians 6. Galatians 6 from 6 to 7. Amen. It is whatever a people or a man sow. That is what they will reap. If we sow to corruption of corruption, we will reap. If we sow to iniquity, we will reap. We will reap full and equal. We will reap the sword of Islam. We will reap pestilence and famine. God will plague us until we return from our prodigality. As a matter of fact, what we are witnessing is a result of what? Of our apostasy. We backslid them, we left sanctification and began to do other things. The church is an apostate church. No love for God, no love for holiness, no love for the brethren. We only, an apostate church only give to church pastors, but they don't give to poor people among them. They only give to pastors to, to continue to build edifice and buy private jet, but they don't give to missions. The feast of rapture is coming up now. We're looking for money to transport missionaries. Free. More and more are coming. We wanted the camp wanted to use. We cannot use because of the money. If we're going to use that camp, we spend over 500000 We can't use that place. Missionaries that are coming, their transport is to be paid. More want to come. We're even stopping them now that more should not come because they don't have the money. But yet, pastors have money. Men, church people have money. They only give to these apostates. Look at the IDPs now. Clothes are there in the cage and we're waiting for money for food to take to the IDPs. To take to, take to the IDPs. Because I don't want to carry those clothes there without food. Amen. But they will not bring the money. An apostate church does not have brotherly love. And that was what happened to Judah in Amos chapter. That is why Amos chapter 6 says, say, woe to them that is in Zion. He said, for they are not grieved at the afflictions of Jacob. Why northern kingdom was under affliction? The southern kingdom were just, were just there enjoying themselves in Judah until the affliction. One of the reasons, the capital reason why God had to join the southern kingdom of Israel is because of what they, they neglected the northern kingdom when the frame was in affliction. The Judah neglected the frame. Just like Nigerian Christians in, in southern Nigeria and in the diaspora have neglected the, the suffering brethren in, in, in the northern Nigeria. Benue have over 1.7 million IDP displaced Christians who have been homeless for the past six, seven, eight years. Taraba, the same thing. Salakada, the same thing. Bruno, the same thing. Nadama, the same thing. That Nasarawa, they are there. They are all over. Let's change. Let's return to the truth. Say for it's the truth that can make us free. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. Our fellow friends and partners and, and listeners. I am Moses or George Enemy God Special, the vision coordinator of the National Restoration Program. We are on a mission to rescue Nigeria. We are in a mission to bring back the ark of the Lord back to Nigeria. But the Lord has given an assignment that if that must happen, the nation must be sanctified, tribe by tribe, city by city, land by land, 
The sanctuary must be sanctified. And then the people must be sanctified. And to further this assignment, we, are, we have en since engaged in what is called National Restoration Program, in which we move around Nigeria, trying to urge the people to return back to the Lord and clean up their land, their self, and the sanctuary. It's an enormous tax. A lot of funds are needed to continue this journey, to continue this mission. By the grace of God, even this January, uh, this February, by in two weeks' time, we are going to be convening what we call the uh, ministers and missionaries retreat that we are convening. You know, we are hosting missionaries and ministers from various interior fields to be able to urge them, prepare them, impact them, and then help them, deliver them so that we can return the ark of the Lord. You can support us. You can partner with us. If you want to partner with us or support this vision, you can get us on 80 Three three nine two one two one three. Let me take it again. Zero eight zero three three nine two one two one three. Or you get us on our email at a global Christian update at gmail.org. Please, uh, we urge you to also subscribe to our YouTube channel and please help to forward this message to others. Share this link, this message to others, to your contact, to your groups, and the Lord of Heaven will bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's God bless you. You can also get books by Moses God Special, Joshua God Special on Amazon Bookstore. My books are there. Understand what God is saying to the churches. Becoming Prophetic Collapse of Islam. Roadmap to, to Collapse and Victory Over the Caliphate. Then the book of, of, of the Prophecy of Nigeria. And several other books are on Amazon. You can link up to our books. You can get this book. They will impact your life greatly. And you can also continue to visit us on, on, on Facebook. Christian Christian Facebook can visit us there or you, link, you refer to our website www.globalxobrit.org God bless you. Shalom. Let's begin to pray that the Lord will help us. The Lord will give us burden for the world. Burden to study the word of God. The Lord will give us burden to study God's word. Let's go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. The burden to study the word of God. Kabalu shakatabalaya. Regede shakatobra 